She's the first one in the older generation who is actually Australian born. And all the others came to Australia when they were teenagers. So there's a little bit of like wanting to feel connected to the Arab Australian community as opposed to the Arab community in Australia. Should we just talk a little bit about Fatima's mum with the... Mm -hmm. Was it her that proposed putting the straps on the engagement dress or was that the dad? No. It's Friday afternoon in Sydney's West. I can't work out why it's such a big deal because she's 38 so she, and she's got, had, got children. She, she... Michael Muhammad Ahmed is working with actor and producer Claudia Carvin to adapt his latest novel into a TV series. It could be some, a story that he tells Ollie. I met um, Michael Mohammed Ahmed when we did Books That Made Us for the ABC and then I read The Other Half of You when it came out and I was just so enthralled by the world. It's really compelling, it's beautifully written, it's really original, authentic and it's incredibly visual and I just thought this could be a great adaptation. She wants to look sexy and feel sexy. The Arab women in my life who read it were just, it was, I couldn't believe it. Like okay. it, it just seemed so, so outrageous. So we, we should just lean into the fact that she's got a massive crush on Zaki and is flirting with him. That's what I think is going on. I, I mean, that's the fun of it really, isn't it? Mohammed is a controversial writer often shocking audiences with his raw honesty. There's a misconception that the best way to counteract negative portrayals of a community is with positive portrayals. I have always disagreed with this idea because I think it's dishonest. My job as a writer is to tell a truthful story and a complex story. My goal is not to sugarcoat or deny some of the antisocial behavior that existed in our communities. And what I hope the audience gets from my work when they've experienced it is our humanity, not just the positive elements, but the, the darker side in a humanizing and complex way. Muhammad's parents migrated to Australia from Lebanon in the 1970s. I was born in a house in Sydney's inner west, in Alexandria, a terrace with five bedrooms and there was about 20 people living in the house. My grandmother who slept on the couch, my parents, three of my uncles. I remember my first experiences of racism being in kindergarten when one of the kids called me a Lebanese shit. We moved to a place called Lakemba. And all of a sudden, we were living in a suburb where every family on our street were from Lebanese and Muslim backgrounds. The irony is that in connecting with this community of people who identified as Arab, I remember it being the first time that I felt very Australian because I was around other Australians who had names like mine and who looked like me and, and whose families came from the same parts of the world that we came from. Muhammad is, he's amazing. He's a really passionate talker. He's a really good orator. He's a very good leader. And he has a lot of self-awareness. Like, you know, he'll talk and talk and talk and talk and then he'll go, you know what? I'm going to set an alarm and I'm not going to talk for an hour. <laughs> and we're like, yes. <laughs> and then he sits there in the room going, mm, mm, mm. through his hour of silence. <laughs> Growing up, Muhammad dreamed of being a famous actor. I did a few courses at the breakfast club at NIDA on the weekends and I finally got what I believed was my big break. A small part in a new TV show that was going to be aired on SBS. And I was cast as a drug dealer named Vinnie Mahmoud. He gets caught with a bag of ecstasy in his pants. 250 grams, Vinnie. That's a commercial corner. You're looking at some good time. Then he makes a deal with the police officers that he will snitch on his gang in exchange for not going to jail. Hey, you're looking good. Then you see me go to my gang leader with a wire. Come on, George, I can help you. Anything you need, anytime, man, you just say it. He catches me, literally blows off my toe, drives me around the corner, 
and they throw me out onto the curb while I'm screaming, my foot, my foot, my foot. The character was so insignificant, in fact, that you don't even see what happens to him after that final scene. But I, like a lot of other Arab and Muslim Australians, was so starved for representation that I genuinely believed any representation was better than no representation, and I was very proud of this achievement. So the night that the episode aired, I got my whole family together in the living room. And at the end of the episode, I'll never forget what my cousin said to me. My, my cousin came up to me and he said this positively and affectionately. He said, that was hectic cuz, you're the lowest piece of shit I've ever seen on television. And I remember that was an incredible epiphany for me. It was a moment of real reflection. And I knew that I could no longer be an actor. I could no longer be a prop in these kinds of narratives. I needed to be in control of the narrative. And I knew that the only way to do that was to leave acting and become a writer, to become the storyteller and to become in control of those stories that are told about us. Mm -hmm.